It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. 7.35 Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Welcome back to our crude oil morning prep. My name is Joseph James. I'm here with my partner in crime, my better looking half, Mr. Marty Erico. Don't forget to check out tradersaudio.com at 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time. Marty and his partner, Jeffrey, do a great job broadcasting live from the NYMEX Exchange. We've got Marty here with us today. He'll be talking about what he's seeing directly from the trading floor. Once again, my name is Joseph. I'm with SchoolofTrade.com. I run a live trade room every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Check us out online at SchoolofTrade.com, and don't forget to join our free trial. You can learn all about how we trade and learn about membership. Moving forward, my job this morning is going to be quite simple. I'm a technical analyst, which means I'm looking at charts. Now, once I'm done looking at charts, we're going to hear what Marty's taking a look at directly from the trading floor. So it's going to be a very powerful way to do this this morning. I'm going to start first with a very slow time frame. I'm going to be giving you a top-down approach, and that means slow time frames first. We'll move on the way down to faster time frames, specifically looking at what's happened over the past few months, the past few weeks, the past few days, and then we'll grind all the way down, drill all the way down to analyzing what's happened over the past few hours. I'll be trading the U.S. morning session with my students in the trade room today, so I'll be looking at the London or the overnight trading session. My job is pretty simple. Once I find the, uh, the last few hours, the last few days, I'm going to be able to anticipate direction at the open. By anticipating direction at the open, I'm able to use support and resistance, trading with the trend, I'm able to find some very high percentage trading opportunities starting as early as 8 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. So very important, starting with those slower time frames, moving down to the faster time frames, anticipating direction, forming an opinion this morning, and then waiting for the price action to confirm or deny that opinion. Now, of course, once I'm done with you, I'm going to toss you all the way across the country from Los Angeles to New York City. We're going to the Nymex Exchange with my good friend Marty Erico. Don't forget, tradersaudio.com. Check him out each morning, live broadcast. He'll be talking about market direction, intermarket divergence, market internals, option prices, and those always important and sometimes a little bit confusing for new traders, those pit session trading levels. Don't forget, guys, I'm going to be using the electronic trading session, whereas Marty will be focused on the regular trading session. Big difference there, so make sure you pay attention to that when he's talking about that later in the call. Also, Make sure you log in and listen in to his broadcast today. Very valuable as he talks about the intermarket divergence between crude oil, Arbob gasoline, heating oil, and Brent crude. These are just two of the very important things we'll be hearing this morning here from Marty. All righty? Enough out of me here. Let's grab some charts. Let's get, look, let's get locked and loaded here this morning. we got a pretty exciting day ahead of us here with a, uh, a day with multiple Red Star news in front of us. I'm going to head right over my blog here first and kind of get the lay of the land here this morning. Again, the blog address here, sidewaysmarkets.com. Check us out here online. You can, of course, see here we've occluded our morning prep just about 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time uh, each morning, usually posted just before we start this call each morning. First of all, traders hoping for much better price action this morning. We had very lackluster, sleepy, sloppy personality uh, the, the, the first half of this week. So traders will definitely be looking forward to better market personality after a lower volume first half of the week. Markets in Europe drifting lower this morning after disappointing news from Italy and the UK. Of course, very important. We have to understand what's happening overnight so we can anticipate what's going to happen this morning. Markets in Europe falling lower here. You can read all about that. Choose any of the news uh, news websites out there. and You can read more about it there. Um, oil pushing higher this morning, up 36 cents, trading around the 103 handle. We've got the 103 big round number being a magnet there for price right now as uh, crude oil is pushing higher this morning. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. S&P also trading higher this morning ahead of the opening bell. Equity markets all uh, pushing higher. S&P leading the way. Of course, opening bell here in the U.S. for the S&P being at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, this morning we're all excited here in this office. we got two Red Star news events. we got GDP and jobless claims on the radar this morning starting at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Speaking of which, let's now look at what day of the week what week of the month, what month of the year. This is going to be very important because it's going to set us up now for what to expect for market personality right, and overall, overall conditions in the market this morning. First of all, what day of the week, what week of the month, what month of the year are we in right now? 
We are in Thursday's trading session. This is what? This is the fourth week of the month and the month of September. What do we know about the month of September? The month of September is a very active month. We tend to see quite a bit of opportunities in the month of September. We've had a wonderful month so far. Hope you guys have as well. We can expect that, conti that, that to continue. We also should make note that as the fourth week of the month, this is pretty much the last week of the month. we got one more day, the 30th of the month, next Monday, but we're pretty much headed into that last week of the month. The last week of the month, what do we know about it? We know Hail Mary trades, right? Lots of, lots of new personalities enter the market towards the beginning and the end of the month. At the end of the month, you've got traders who are hitting their numbers, traders who are trying to get themselves out of a hole. You've got traders and speculators who are going to be positioning themselves ahead of next month. And then we go into the beginning of the month, and we have all of a sudden a bunch of hedgers enter the market, right? Crude oil buyers trying to prevent themselves from being affected by rising prices in the future. So whether we're talking about speculators or hedgers, the beginning and the end of the month is always an important time to be, uh, to be looking for trading opportunities, and we definitely will be. Thursdays. Thursdays are always a great day in our live trade room. Usually we have uh, jobless claims, GDP, right, once a month. And, of course, today we'll have both of those. We'll have GDP and jobless claims, two Red Star news events here at 8.30 a.m. This tells me to be ready for the price action, to be moving quickly here early in the session. If we didn't have any news until later in the session, I would recommend we sit on the hands, take, right, take some time to prepare for the day, wait for the news later on in the afternoon or this morning. Not the case today, though. We have early morning news starting at 8.30 a.m. Be ready for the price action early this morning. Later in the session, we have uh, two events here at 10 o'clock. we got home sales, pending home sales, that is. And, of course, we got our Fed speaker, Jeremy Stein, just after the 10 o'clock hour. Really important, guys, those home sales numbers have been under heavy scrutiny the past few weeks. We saw some very bullish numbers over the past few months. Over the past few weeks, though, those numbers have cooled off a little bit here. Uh, nationally, we're still moving higher. Uh, here in Los Angeles, you wouldn't even know the difference. You would, you would think the market was still on fire here in L.A., but the reality is we got pending home sales at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and then we're going to hear from Jeremy Stein, a Fed speaker, before we go into that nat gas inventory number. We'll listen to Marty talking about nat gas inventories here in just a moment, but we got nat gas inventories at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time this morning. One more Fed speaker at 12.15. That wraps up the morning here. Going to be, as you can see, you're going to be quite an active morning session, as you can see. 8.30, we get started. 10 o'clock, we continue. We'll listen to see what uh, the Fed speakers are saying here as we finish up the morning session. Remember, those Fed speakers are, are tearing into the Fed right now. It's been very interesting, almost entertaining, uh, to listen to these Fed speakers just bashing on, uh, on Bernanke, the Fed and the White House policies about tapering. It's been a very interesting thing to, uh, to listen into. So we'll continue to do that today uh, and, of course, the rest of the month, September. Looking forward now, now that we know what the news looks like today, now that we know that we're in very active, very busy Thursday morning, you can learn more about each news event by clicking on the links on the blog. And then, of course, as you scroll down here, we've got all kinds of commentary here, starting with our slowest time frame first. We'll start right out with our daily chart. Now, remember, kiddos, daily charts are not to be traded by intraday traders. Daily charts, really, for the most part, are only going to give us overall market projections. They're going to tell us what the market's been up to the past few weeks, and we can see here right now on this daily chart, we have a couple of clues in the daily chart. First of all, we're coming off the resistance zone at 107.83 to 111.32. You can see here a nice rounded top, nice head and shoulders, and we're about to move lower. With that information, we dig into it. Clearly, we can see we're moving lower this morning. But look closely, though, and what do you see? If I zoom in on this candlestick, you'll notice here that we have Back-to-back-to-back to back to back candles here. We've got inside candle, inside candle, inside candle. We get a doji candle showing us indecision. We've got a bearish bodied candle. And then today we are bullish inside that previous day's candlestick. Notice we're inside the body of the previous day's daily candle. What this suggests to us is, is that over the past few days we've been inconsistent. We've been sideways, right? Slightly bearish tone clearly. But now that we have that green bullish candle opening up inside of yesterday's range that immediately tells me two-sided trading, potential reversal. As you can see, we're expecting prices to continue to go lower, but that doesn't mean, though, that we can't rattle around inside of those ranges while we push new lower lows. Look for support here at 101.27. 
So here in the daily chart, the daily chart right away is telling me long-term swing traders are short right now, but intraday traders, we're going to look for two-sided trading because we're inside that daily candle. Moving forward now, zooming in on a four-hour chart, we see a price wedge here. Right away here, this price wedge is screaming at us, buy those lows, sell those highs, be careful in the middle. And you can see here, that's exactly what we see here right now. I've got trend lines drawn in overhead. I've got trend lines drawn in from below. That creates the price wedge. I've got support here waiting for me at 101.48. That will definitely be a location. If I'm selling short, I'll look to take profit. If I'm buying, I'll wait to buy at this 101.48. And remember, guys, once we go into this wedge, once we get into that narrow part of the wedge, then get ready for the breakout, either up or down. So if that happens later on today, right, if we end up uh, trading into the narrower portion of that price wedge, probably not going to happen today. Look for it later on in the week, possibly on Monday or Tuesday next week. But look for a potential big breakout, either up or down, if we stay inside of this price wedge. Most important thing I can see on this chart, the four-hour chart, is that we're moving lower. We have support at 101.48, and we can see we have trend lines above us and trend lines below us. All of these levels are going to be contributing to putting together an opinion of what our plan is going to be here today, starting in our trade room at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Moving forward here, we got a couple more to go through, 60-minute chart. On the hourly chart here, we can see there's that, there's that bear trend. We saw that coming a mile away. We didn't really need to see a 60-minute chart to get this information. The daily chart pretty much told us we'd be moving lower. But this really does illustrate for us, though, just how consistently moving lower this market personality has been. And then we can see here overhead, if we're buying today, we've got targets at 103.96, 105.18, and 105.88. And I will be looking to sell short if we get all the way up to 106.88. That obviously won't happen today, most likely. We'll be looking at that probably middle of the week to the end of the week next week if we go higher here. So keep an eye, guys. If we're buying long right now, which, of course, the short-term trend appears to be moving higher, remember, intraday traders, day traders, we're going to follow that short-term trend. We really don't need to worry about the fact that we are long-term bearish right now. Most important thing to use these anchor charts for is to find major turning points in the market, and then I'm going to keep drilling down to find the short-term trend, which appears to be higher here this morning, we're going to use these levels, 103.96, 105.18, and 106.88. Clearly here, I'll take some profit at 103.96. If we get up to that 105.18, I will be looking to sell because now we can take advantage of the long-term trend. Clearly, we'll be drooling over this 106.88. I'll tell you, we will, be, we will be unloading on this if we can get a sell up there at 106.88 here uh, late in the month, early in the month of October. So be on the lookout for 106.88. Moving forward now, let's head over some faster time frames. Specifically, we see a lot of clues now out of the 30-minute chart. Let's jump on over and take a look at the 30-minute. 30 30-minute 30 chart's going to tell me a lot more information here. Very specifically, I can tell now what type of market personality we're going to have today based on what I'm seeing in the 30-minute chart. We already know the long-term trend is down, and we already know the short-term trend has been pushing higher. Now we begin to see a couple clues here. First of all, we can see there's that downward trend, three days in a row of red shaded areas. You can see how our indicator package makes it really easy for a new trader just to visualize this information. Very easy to digest the information. But now we start to get the big important clues. Look what we have here. New lower lows, failed. New higher highs, failed. We don't see this very often, guys. We don't see the fact that we have a new higher high and a new lower low in the same session, right? We call that an expanding, right, an expanding market personality. So with that comes the question, who's really in control? The buyers tried and they failed. The sellers tried and they failed. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about getting below the previous day's range. What this tells me now is, is that because we closed near the lows, right? Notice how we closed the day yesterday near those lows. And we did not, remember, sometimes the best, the most important information is what you don't see on your charts. We did not open lower. Now think about that for a second. As of the end of the day yesterday, traders were clearly bearish. What happened? What changed? Did the old uh, bullish fairy right, show up in the middle of the night and drop a little pixie dust on the traders and say, all right, now you're going to be a buyer? We have no idea, as most traders don't exactly what caused 
these buyers to wake up this morning and say, nope, we're not bearish anymore. We're now seeing value in higher prices. What happened? What changed? Maybe it was disappointing news out of Europe. Maybe it was a natural disaster. There are all kinds of scenarios that will lead to prices changing direction. Do we try to understand it all? No. We're never going to know everything. All we're going to do is, is figure out what is it telling us. We can see here what should have happened is price should have opened lower. And since it didn't, now we know those sellers have failed. We know now that price is most likely going to rotate now up to that 103.96. So I'm looking for 103.96, the previous high of day, to be tested today. Be aware, though, you're trading right in the middle of that range right now, and that spells disaster for a new trader if you're not aware of how to trade it. Be very careful trading in the middle of any range. I will be expecting two-sided range-bound trading this morning. We may not make it all the way to 103.96, but I'll be definitely looking for a profit target there if we can get it for a runner. Most importantly, buy those lows, sell those highs. I am expecting a range-bound, narrow trading range here today. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we get a nice big wide trading range, but the way the personality looks right now, uh, we are looking at a range-bound, two-sided trading day inside the range from yesterday after an expansion and a failed expansion yesterday afternoon. Now, don't forget, we get a couple big news events coming at 8.30 this morning, so I might be, I might be taking the foot out of my mouth here, right, talking about a range-bound day. Uh, it may definitely improve if this news from GDP and jobless claims come out unexpected. Before we toss it over to the NYMEX exchange with Marty Errico, you can see here on the 15 minute this morning, we are pushing higher here. Almost as if these buyers are saying, I don't care what this resistance level at 103.08 is talking about. It looks like they're going to push right on through. Give me a close above 103.29, and we're looking good to go test the 103.58, 103.96 overhead. Again, give me a close above 103.29, and those bulls are fully in charge, and we should see price gravitate up towards that 103.58 and we get that runner target at 103.96. Again, range-bound market personality, buy those lows, sell those highs, do your homework, guys and gals, be ready for that test today here. We get it easy here as day traders, right? We know there's only three ways price can move. Price can move up, price can move down, and price can move sideways. We will be ready, prepared, locked, and loaded for any scenario that comes our way. But you know what? I'm always anxious to hear what Marty's seeing. It's always important that we compare. I've got some charts in front of me. Marty, great to have you back here today, my friend. Happy Thursday to you. we got uh, a busy day in front of us. How's, the, how's that pit looking this morning? Well, the pit's a little dead until we open up, but uh, judging off of yesterday's activity, right, we saw some really good activity yesterday in terms of just that sideways range, right, the expansion of that range that you're speaking of. Uh, what I did see around those lows from yesterday and around that 102.30 level was a little bit of stop running from some market makers. So that kind of gives us the confidence that we could look for some longs, right, from the overnight. But the one thing that we didn't see in the overnight was getting down below 102 because if we did get down below 102, we would be toast and we would be talking about selling the hell out of this market basically, right? And we would be talking about really, really good short opportunities. But as of right now, you can see, Right, yesterday, as you were talking about that range expansion, right, that support kind of holds down here. And that's interesting to say the least because if we can open up above and we can start to march higher, it's all about that opening print this morning, then we could see some upside activity. Right? So it's all about that open today. Could we open up uh, above these new uh, overnight session highs into new overnight session higher highs? Right? Could we open up around these 350s after jobless claims and GDP? Right? Can we see that strength above the prior day's high, the pit session high? If you look at the pit traded chart, you can see if we can open up above right, 103.60, uh, 103.5, get above some support, the opening print from yesterday, then we could definitely see some strength. If not, then it's going to be a very sideways, choppy trading range today. So again, we're looking for opening prints above this, the resistance right here on your floor chart this morning, right? We're going to be looking at the pit session levels here, and we're going to try to get an opening print here above these levels to go higher. If not, then it's just going to be sideways and choppy. So it's very important to see where we get our opening print this morning. But most importantly, let's just talk about here um, markets in general. This morning so far, if you look at the multiple market divergence, that's between crude oil bob and heating oil, they are all looking a little bit more firm off their support levels now. We had kind of that expanding range in both the crude, the uh, all three, I mean to say crude, RBOB, and in the heating oil 
or bobbin heating oil are marching higher just like the crude this morning and they are near resistance levels and they need to clear these resistance levels to get a little bit firmer to trade even higher. Now, what I noticed so far, heating oil leading the way quite significantly. Now, it's up above some uh, significant levels from earlier in the week. We're trading around 299.16, right? So we're kind of cleared there in the scenario of heating oil. If we were watching crude to heating oil right now, crude would be all the way up around, um, you know, almost that 104 level, basically. So that's like the equivalency of that. So I'm seeing some very nice strength in heating oil and also in your RBOB this morning. RBOB last print 267.5, heating oil is around 299.20. So our multiple market divergence is telling us that we are trading higher so far this morning and that we could see some more strength in the market as these spreads start to come in. So what floor traders are looking at and what the guys in the pit are looking at are exactly what I just explained. Um, they're looking at this multiple market divergence, but they're also looking for that strength, right, that opening above those, that resistance on the floor charts. So that's very significant and important to remember to see where we open up this morning. So the spreads now this morning and kind of giving us a little bit of a bullish indication as well if we look over to the Brent WTI spread. Not the greatest example of a bullish indication at the moment, but it's below 6 even. It's 594, so if we can continue a little bit lower on the Brent WTI spread, that will give us strength in our crude, our regular crude oil right here. That will give us strength if we can continue lower on the Brent WTI spread. Brent crude, interesting enough, back up above 109 now. Okay, 109.10, 109.05 is trading, so now we're back up above that 109 handle, which is going to give us some confidence to possibly we can see some longs if we can open up into new higher highs into the pit session from the overnight session. So that means opening up above the 103.25 and trying to at least get an opening print above the 103 halves. If not, then like I mentioned, we're going to be sideways and it's going to be a little tough here. Of course, we always have that one variable in place, the news. So after looking at the spreads, right, we see that they're kind of um, very firm so far this morning. We're looking for them to weaken out so crude can obviously trade higher. I want to just remind you guys as well before we move on and before we look at some other things, natural gas. Yesterday, you can see the big push that we had to the down by pre-inventories, and that kind of had to do with the roll. They shifted from uh, a lot of open interest in the 360 strike, right, the 360 strike. There was a lot of open interest in that strike. Then they went down to 355s at the end of the day, and there was over about 7,000 in uh, volume and in open interest at 355 strikes. So where do we settle? Right around 355. Look at the floor chart. 355, 354 half, so five ticks away from 355, and all those options traders that traded and put their money into the 355 strike now came in the money, right? So now it's, instead of it being um, OTM, now it's ITM in the money. All right, so now that we look at the expiration of the October contract today, we will see added volatility in this market along with here your inventory number as well today. Now, analysts have a very wide range of uh, what they're looking for in terms of the inventory number for the forecasts. Uh, last person I just spoke to on the phone was about 20 minutes ago, and they're looking for 66 feet. So we're going to go with that firm here. That's Platts and uh, Baker Hughes, Reuters, and the NYMEX are all looking for 66 BCF. So anything above 66 BCF, we will be selling. Anything below 66 BCF, we will be buying. So it's pretty much simple as that. If we get that, if we get a lesser than expected build, and we get something like you know 50, that'd be very bullish. If we get something like 70, that'd be very bearish. Another thing I'm looking at here that's going to be very important with this natural gas number today is going to be that five-year average. Now, this is something that a lot of traders don't really kind of watch out for, but the five-year average is going to be very important here to see what type of change in the BCF and percentage-wise we have. Very, very, very important for natural gas traders to comprehend that and look at that. So, again, we're going to be looking at that here, guys, the five-year average in, the, in our broadcast. So far this morning, not much news here in terms of in respect to what will move crude so far, so we're going to be definitely watching those, the jobless claims and the GDP data for definitely a little bit of a, a boost in this market because it could get us back up above into new higher highs. We can open up there, and that could lead us into a totally different scenario of what we saw from yesterday. Now, remember yesterday's opening print, right, just below that previous high a day in the uh, blowback session. So you can see it created that sideways trading range. So if we get a very similar open like yesterday and we fall short of getting above the prior day high or at least above this pit session prior day high, that's going to give us that sideways trading range and it's going to be very choppy. So we spoke about the natural gas inventory. We spoke about natural gas in general, right? 
If we get that inventory number below 66, then we'll be buying. Above 66, we'll be selling. Now, remember, the colder weather is going to be a huge variable in this market, and that's what's really been moving us the last couple of days. These weather forecasts have been very uh, colder than expected, right? Just about average to below average. So we're in the shoulder season right now, and we're not getting absolutely any demand in terms of you know, cooling or heating your home. So we've just been watching the market falling off of that. Also, the rig counts have been uh, giving us that bearish indication. The Baker Hughes rig counts and the overall rig counts for natural gas have been very bearish, so that's been pushing us lower. So now that we kind of have a little bit of a game plan of attack, right, we're going to come in and at least try to get a 50% retrace here from this huge move down over the last couple of days. So that's our game plan here for the natural gas. Uh, looking at your levels now, I have your pit session levels from yesterday, of course. And remember, in the pit, as I mentioned, we saw that expanding range yesterday before I go over to levels. We saw that expanding range yesterday, right, into the close. But we saw that major support hold almost as like a double bottom in a way. Not quite a double bottom, a few ticks off, but it was like a little bit of stop running below the prior day's high. I was trying to circle that. Uh, prior day's low, excuse me. So we had the prior day's low here, right? And we fell just short of it. But overall, I'm still thinking this support here held. We saw a little bit of stop running from locals in the pit, and then you saw that nice uh, move up. Now, this was stop running into the close, so that's why it's so significant, because they can't trade overnight, the guys in the pit. They can they have to wait till one more hour now till the market opens. So we saw stop running into the close, right, which was very significant, a lot of selling, and um, that basically kind of ran us lower. And now this morning, as they open up, we're going to see some nice buying. I'm thinking so locals and paper here, kind of somewhat of a buy the low, buy the dip type mentality. That's what they've been doing. They've been buying dips all week. And that's what we've been watching a lot of the locals and paper doing. So I just want to kind of keep that in mind. We do have paper kind of in somewhat of a net long position because remember, those record speculation uh, COT reports that we've been getting out, right, with record uh, net longs, all those initiated from the 102 level. So once we see volume below the 102 level, that will be the mass exodus of all the paper traders that were long, that are still are long, right, and all those locals now that came in and bought those dips last yesterday, that's going to be huge if we see a break below 102 because all those will get out and we'll see 100 and even 97 really quickly. I'm telling you, it to happen real quick with volatility because if you look at the vol, and you look at the delta at those strike levels, it's huge. Okay. Let's talk about pit session levels real quick. The high from yesterday, 103.76, low 102.40, close the settlement number, 102.64. I got your daily pivot today here, 102.93, which we are well above this morning here. I got resistance up above here, which we have to open up above, 103.64. If we open up above that, that will be nice. I got 103.75, very close to that prior day high. So that's extra resistance. You see the pit session previous high day, right? Right near that 103.75. And then 105.11, JJ, I think, was saying 105. Um, 105. Uh, what was it saying, 25, I think, as a target, right? So that's my potential target to the upside, right? That 105.12, 105.11 level is that was a major level the last couple days. And we're still watching because we're in the range from the last couple days. Support down below, 102.10, 102 even, right, is going to be a very significant level here, guys, that I'm going to be watching. Once again, that's 102 even. I got 101.57 and 140, right, 100 spot 40. Very important level. All right, guys, so we do have this open interest kind of falling out, squeezing out the shorts for the most part, 341,584. We'll get those fresh numbers on the open. And remember here, implied volatility, 22%. It fell yesterday just a bit, but now back up to 22%. So that's hopeful for a little bit of a range expansion again because of the higher volatility. Uh, larger strikes in the pit, 102 calls, they buy them, and then they basically sell 102 halves. Uh, remember, they're straddling and spreading this market a lot, so we're seeing actually some more call buying. I saw significant call buying as well at that 103 half level yesterday. Major strike here, guys, yesterday traded 103 half, so uh, all those calls can kind of pop into play. They went for about $2, so uh, how much does it cost? Two bucks for that call, so about one. 103 half plus the $2 premium on the trade gets you up to 105.12, right? So that's what traders are going to be looking for because that's how these options work. Support down below, ladies and gentlemen, here. So I'm very hopeful if we can get above 103.50, right, and you get that and get all those options to come in, we'll boost right up to 105 because we saw a lot of call buying at 103 half. And we'll see. watch for today. Well, listen for it in the pit as well, guys, because that's going to be significant for us to reach that 105 because 
those calls are coincidentally trading at about two bucks. So you add two dollars onto the strike, and that's basically when they're in the money. All right, guys. So once again, now we're going to look at your natural gas here. Novi contract three sixty ten was your high. Your low was three fifty four thirty. Closing settlement number yesterday was three fifty four half, right near the low print of the day. Daily pivot three fifty six thirty. Resistance of above three fifty eight thirty. Three sixty two ten and three fifty eight. Sorry, guys. Three sixty eight. 30 here guys it's 368 30 here once again support down below I got here 358 30 350 half and 344 70 right open interest here 246,119 kind of been now showing just a little bit of increase in the net short position but still we have to watch what the new numbers are today and also most importantly the inventory numbers as well here, guys, again, which we're looking for, 66 BCF. That may change. The Platts uh, analysts were looking for actually up above 70, so it may change. But right now we're looking for 66. So, again, guys, that's it. Beware for the uh, numbers coming out just about inside of 25 minutes. So those numbers, talking jobs, claims, GDP, as we are ready to rock here, guys, today. Throwing it back on over to JJ in Los Angeles. i got to get a high step on this day. Awesome job, Marty. As always, great to hear from you, my man. Guys and gals, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for being on the call. Don't forget, don't forget, we need your feedback. What do you like? What do you hate? Would you like to see something more, something less? You want this longer, shorter? What do you guys like? What do you guys hate? What do you guys got for feedback here for us regarding our, regarding our, uh, our morning prep? Don't forget to email us your feedback. I'm JJ at School of Trade. That was Marty at Traders Audio. Don't forget to check us out, guys. Check out Marty over at tradersaudio.com, and of course, I'm over at schooloftrade.com. All righty, send us your feedback. Don't forget, if you want to come join us for a live broadcast tomorrow, we get a Friday morning edition, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Thank you so much for being here. As always, you guys make great participants every morning. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for following us on the blog, and we'll see you guys back here in 23 hours and 30 minutes for a finally Friday edition of our Crude Oil Morning Prep. Have yourselves a great Thursday morning. Don't forget about those jobless claims and GDP coming out. We get a bullish sentiment out of crude. We've talked about our targets. We know our strategy. Now it's time to go execute. We'll see you guys in my live trade room. Opens now. See you guys then. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.